All right, folks. Well, welcome. If you're new here, I'm glad to have you. And for my returners, I'm <laughs> absolutely glad to have you too. Do me a favor before you leave, if you haven't already, down here in the bottom right hand corner, hit like and subscribe. I don't know if you've been paying attention or not, but in my last video, I smoked salt and pepper. And the intent of smoking the salt and pepper was to make cache e pepe, which is in English, cheese and pepper. Well, tonight we are making cheese and pepper. Actually, it's a spaghetti dish and it is a Roman spaghetti dish and it is made with five ingredients. One of those is water. So that kind of narrows it down to four. Okay, so that leaves us with spaghetti. It leaves us with salt, pepper, and in this case, it's gonna be Romano cheese. If you don't have Romano cheese or you don't have access to Romano cheese, by all means, use Parmesan cheese. But in my book, any good spaghetti dish needs to have garlic bread to go with it. And so the first thing that we're gonna to do tonight is we're going to make some garlic bread. Now I have to give credit for this recipe to Justin Wilson, the Cajun cook. And if you don't know who he is, he was kind of a pioneer in PBS cooking te uh, television shows. I used to watch him back in the 90s and I used to love watching his show. So all credit to Justin Wilson on this recipe. And so, Folks, let's get turned around and see what we're doing here. All right, folks, so the first thing I need to do is get this salted butter. This is about the only time you're gonna find me using salted butter. We're gonna get that put in our little bowl here. Just like that. Kind of push it down in. Don't worry, I've got clean hands. In fact, I just did some dishes right before doing this. I'm gonna set that out of the way for the moment. I got a couple cloves of garlic here that I want to cut up. Actually, I'm going to slice them. Give these a little chop. I got about a quarter tablespoon or teaspoon of salt here. A teaspoon would be the little ones. And this is kind of coarse kosher salt. And we're just going to kind of smush this garlic into the salt. We want to kind of paste, make a paste out of it. The garlic's going to, or the salt's going to help to pulverize our garlic. Well, I can really smell that. And if you've got a garlic press, by all means. Have at it. There we go, that's got it pretty good. We're gonna put that right in there with our butter. Now the next thing we're gonna do, we are gonna take, I got a, about a quarter cup of shredded Parmesan here. Put that in there. And I've got some black pepper here, which is gonna be kind of central to our dish tonight. We want to grind up some of this right into our for our garlic bread. This is not the smoked black pepper. Actually it's four color pepper. Grab us a fork. We're just going to smush this all together real good. We want to make sure we get the cheese, the garlic, and everything all mixed up in here so it's all spreadable. I think that'll about do it right there. Now we've got our loaf of bread here. We're just gonna, this is just a good loaf of uh, white bread that I picked up at the grocery store. I did not make this one. We're just cutting it lengthwise like that. A knife. We're just gonna spread this pretty good and heavy onto this loaf of bread. Hope you can see some of that black pepper. Okay, so I think that's got us going with the garlic bread. Take a piece of foil. We're gonna build our loaf back together here. That. By the way, our oven is preheating at 350 degrees. Let's 
twist our ends. So, and we're going to put that right into the oven for about 15-20 minutes. It's time to get clean this up so we can get in and start on our Cache e Pepe. Now then folks, let me tell you, to start with, when I opened up that black pepper and that salt, it was amazing how aromatic the smoke coming off of them was. I was uh, kind of shocked actually, but that's a good thing. But that was also the reason why I did not go ahead and try to smoke the cheese. I was afraid of overdoing the smoke and I didn't want to do that. This uh, Romano cheese. This is American made Romano cheese and believe it or not we Americans make actually make some pretty good artisanal cheeses and wines and such and they compete very well on the world in competition. So at any rate, if you were going to make it actually true to form you would be buying Pecorino Romano and that would be made um, outside of Rome somewhere. At any rate this is American Romano. I'm going to go ahead and I want to grate up probably a cup and a half at least. If I've got extra I can always put it in a Ziploc bag and save it for a next time. Now I'm grating this on the finest grating on the box here. Because we want it grated, we don't want it shredded. Now Romano is a sheep's milk. Not even quite a good cup yet. That's about a good cup to start with. Let's see if we can't get us another half a cup here. This is some serious work. Now I started off with an 8 ounce block here and I'm going to say 8 ounces is probably going to turn, would turn out to about 2 cups. Grated cheese that is. The cheese is very aromatic. Okay, I think that will be pretty close. Alright folks, now let me tell you about the spaghetti I'm using. I'm using Barilla, but it's artisanal, or wait a minute, what do they call it? Collection. And what it is, it has been forced through a die that is made out of brass, and the brass makes it for a rougher surface on the outside of the spaghetti. And that rougher surface makes it so that it will uh, hold on to a sauce better. And so that's the reason why I bought that particular style. In fact, it says Barilla Collezion. And it says made with carefully sourced ingredients, Barilla Collezion is crafted using traditional Italian bronze plates. Did I say brass? Bronze. It's bronze. For an al dente texture that perfectly holds sauces and elevates your pasta dishes. Now you gotta remember that they're advertising here. Spaghetti, the most popular pasta shape in Italy, gets its name from the Italian word spaghi, which means lengths of core. Spaghetti perfectly pairs with Neapolitan tomato sauces, fresh vegetables, or fish. We're not using any of that tonight. We're using cheese, water, salt, and pepper to go with it. And it's about time to get turned around here and we are going to get started in on this cache e pepe. It's that time. We're going to turn around and all the work's going to be on the stove now. All right, first thing I need to do is get my, my heat going up, up underneath this water here. Now I've got a three quart saucepan, or I guess maybe it's a small stock pot. And I'm gonna take my two and a half tablespoons, that'd be the big ones, of this smoked Mediterranean sea salt. We're gonna put that in there. Now, my research says that this is supposed to be as salty as seawater, so we're going to hope we get there. I'm also going to start a fire underneath my skillet here. And this is going to be on a probably a medium heat here. And we're going to put our black peppercorns in here. We're just going to toast those a bit. Until hopefully they get good and aromatic here in a minute. You'll want to give those a shake once in a while. I can already smell that smoke coming off of the pepper. We don't want to leave that on there but maybe five minutes. We're not trying to burn them here. We've toasted these. I'm just going to use the bottom of this little ramekin kind of a thing here. And I just want to brush these up a little bit. 
I want some big pieces of pepper. A couple of scapees here. Well, I can really smell black pepper now. Much more than I could smell it before, of course, but now that we're cracking these peppercorns open like this, definitely get the smell of black pepper over the smoke, I guess. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, if you've got a grinder, pepper grinder, that gives you a good coarse grind, by all means, that's what you want. I assure you it's a lot easier than going about it this way. This kind of takes a strong hand here, actually. Careful of the side of the skillet. They're hot. Ask me how I know. There we go. It looks like it's got most all of them cracked now. Here's an escapee and another one. Also, the fewer of the number of peppercorns that are underneath the crush here, the easier it is because it gets to be like a bed of nails where they become mutually supporting of each other. Okay, we're gonna put this into our little ramekin deal here. At least most of it. Doesn't have to be perfect on this. There we go. I'm gonna set that back there. The time being. And it looks like our water is just getting ready to come to a boil now. Very quickly here. Almost perfect timing. Now the package says for the perfect al dente to go 12 minutes on this. We'll see. In case I failed to mention it, this is a half a pound or about half a pound of spaghetti. You don't want to over make this dish. As it cools it's going to tighten up. Meaning that the cheese is going to want to try to kind of like solidify again on us. And if you over make it you're going to end up with a hard, pretty hard glob of cheesy spaghetti that you're going to try to put in the refrigerator that's going to make it even harder yet. And it's going to be very difficult to try to get uh, leftovers out of this. I love leftovers but this is probably not one of those dishes that you're going to get leftovers out of. It's definitely not going to be like leftover spaghetti bolognese for instance. All right and our water is coming to a boil. Now I'm going to put these in whole. We don't want to break them up. Now in this case you do want to kind of uh, spread these a little bit. Now and the reason why I use so little water because I want a starchy water concentrate here. We're going to use that starch in the water as an emulsifier for the cheese. Meaning we're going to be trying to mix an oil and a water basically because cheese is made out of a fat. Well so we're going to be trying to mix and make a sauce out of this cheese and water. And so we want the starch to use as the emulsifier. Emulsifier means that something that helps to uh, oil and water to mix. For instance, your laundry soap is an emulsifier, as is dish soap, as is body soap. We'll kind of bend this around now, see if we can get it all down in the water without breaking it. We don't want it sticking together, so we want to give it a little stir, make sure we're not clumping up here. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn a little fire back under my skillet. It's going to be a low fire. I'm going to go ahead and turn the water off. I'm going to take a ladle of this water, put it right into my skillet there. Now then, we're going to transfer. We don't want to drain this. We need the water. Okay, I think I'm to a point of diminishing returns here. There might be a couple noodles left in there. Now we got our spaghetti here. We're going to take our cheese. Romano cheese. We're going to put that in like so. I want a good amount of cheese. I like, I love cheese. We're going to kind of just mix it in here. We can always add more cheese, more water, whatever we need here. We saved our water, but we want to make we want to get this good and stirred up. Some people call this Italian macaroni and cheese. Oh, it smells wonderful. Can you see our cheese starting to melt in here? I think I'm going to go for a little more cheese here. I like that. cheese is wanting to clump up on my tongs there and I don't want it to. I want it to melt into my pasta. Just a little more cheese I think. I like that. 
Huh, we're going to come in with some of this pepper. You see that? You see how the sauce is really starting to come together here? A little more pepper, I think. Trying to make a real mess here if you want to know the truth. Now, and you see how the cheese is sticking to the pasta here? That's what we want. I'll turn my heat off. Twist it on here. <laughs> I don't know if I'm doing this twist very good. Sorry, Chubby. There we go. How about that? It's time for a picture. All right, folks. Well, isn't that beautiful? I think so. It's that time. Let's get turned around before this hardens up on me. Who we, folks? I don't mind telling you, that was a little bit of work, actually. But that was just because I was trying to get it right and live up to expect expectation. Because I had seen this on another channel. In fact, I want to thank Stephen over at Not Another Cooking Show for giving me the inspiration to doing this. Now we don't cut this up. We're just going to stick a fork in it, give it a good twist. Mm. Mm. Excuse me for talking with my mouth full. But I'm in heaven. Now I see what all the fuss is about. Some of my garlic bread. Mm. Wow, we folks. I try not to take such a big bite here, but it is trying to stiffen up on me here. This is the reason why you don't want to make leftover enough for leftovers. Folks, I am seriously in heaven here. <laughs> I don't even know what I've been missing all my life. Wow. I can say there's just a hint of smoke flavor to this, which is really what I wanted. A really dominant flavor here. Wow. Folks, I could sit here and eat in front of you all night, but I'm not going to. Do me a favor. If you like what you're seeing, down here in the bottom right hand corner, hit like and subscribe and stay tuned. There's always more to come. And thanks for watching.